Before my last point, I need to share more of how absurd this mess is and how long it's been going on. Five years ago, a month after my father died, I learned there was no clause in the trust for discretionary help with a future life endangering medical crisis. This was a couple years before I realized the explanation for everything my father said and did is narcissistic personality disorder. However, at 50 years of age, I did know my father well enough that I had long noted his difficulty processing information and needing someone like his late wife, my mother, to tell him the right thing to do. In retrospect, my situation was better before he died because for 25 years, if I needed help with out-of-pocket hospital expenses, I could call and he'd help. In 1991, he paid $10,000 for much needed but uninsured surgery for me. He knew I left a teaching job in Saudi Arabia after a near fatal asthma attack. And I left a job in China because of SARS. He'd even sent a care package with surgical masks and a news clipping about a mysterious disease killing people at about the same time that I arrived there. How did he forget all this in drafting his trust unless something affected his cognitive abilities, something affected his testamentary capacity? After he died, I had to deal with a trust officer, a lawyer and CPA, who'd never actually met him and did not know me except by a prejudicial smearing poisoned affections letter he left in the trust. She even said to me she wished she'd been able to work with my father. Quote, it looks like he went only so far in his paperwork and stopped, end quote. For two years, I tried to explain to her and to her friend, an outside attorney for the trust, what my predicament was. I pointed out again and again how financially very unrewarding my career had been, how I had a net worth of zero when my father died and thus will have nothing to pay for a future heart attack or stroke. Yet I knew there were enough assets that there could be help with treatment for a major medical crisis. All this I explained repeatedly to the trust officer and her gal pal, but both were downright dismissive of my concerns and entreaties. I researched trust law, including Uniform Trust Code and Restatement Third of Trusts. I understand not every state has adopted every part of these, but my predicament seemed to merit closer consideration of Clause 66, Subsection 1 of Restatement 3rd. Quote, if a trustee knows or should know of circumstances that justify judicial action under Subsection 1 with respect to an administrative provision, and of the potential of those circumstances to cause substantial harm to the trust or its beneficiaries, the trustee has a duty to petition the court for appropriate modification of or deviation from the terms of the trust, end quote. I'd say whether or not someone can get life-saving medical help depending on available finances qualifies as something that could cause substantial harm to a beneficiary. The trustee's gal pal attorney, who is the wife of a preacher, declined to put the question to an objective judge, saying there was nothing in the trust documents to warrant such a move for modification. Even after I got my own outside attorney she hemmed and hawed for months about whether what I saw as a life or death issue could be asked of the trust advisors 
who are also remained their beneficiaries if I predecease them. Yes, a moral conflict of interest. But when it was pointed out to the preacher's wife, she shrugged it off, saying the conflict of interest existed when it was made, as if that obviates it, as if it is not reason to seek a judge's opinion about an amendment to help pay for life-preserving medical treatment when that amendment is rejected by the same people who stand to benefit if I predecease them. That's one law degree Vanderbilt needs to rescind. So, not only did my father forget to add a clause for help that might make the difference between life or death for me and my family, there are also two lady estate attorneys ignorant of a moral responsibility of no ordinary importance. I wonder when the last read Banks Good versus Goodfellow, I wonder if legal professionals contemplate how their efforts to be amoral are sometimes immoral. Again, all of my points can be supported by things in estate documents and correspondence and from his preserved correspondence to me and others. One more quote from Banks versus Goodfellow. Quote, if human, the human instincts and affections or the moral sense become perverted by mental disease, etc., etc., in such a case, it is obvious that the condition of testamentary power fails, end quote. Someone should have noticed this 13 years ago when my father first set out to make his will and trust. If not then, then someone should have noticed it five years ago when I pointed to things which at least call, called for a closer, more careful forensic examination of his testamentary and financial capacity. But neither the trust officer nor her gal pal outside attorney ever once came back to me with, this seems like a pretty serious and important issue to you. Let's make sure we understand what you're asking us to consider. Never. What I've concluded is that the law doesn't care about the truth or right and wrong. With that and my final point next, I'm putting the law on notice. It has an intellectual and moral obligation to learn what it doesn't know, to keep from allowing immoral and unethical results to follow from its misguided attempts to be amoral. Perhaps the scientific method and humility can be of help in this search for the truth. My final point, and the reason for putting this on YouTube, I am disappointed both in my young attorney and her communication and language skills, and in the system for yet another reason regarding the NPD issue. Despite the way that it can and does explain everything, it cannot be used in court because it might confuse the jury. I had a couple thoughts when I read that in my attorney's letter. Sad but true, many people on a jury are ill-equipped to follow reasoning and logic. Even when spoon-fed something such as this is what NPD experts say, and these are specific examples of Tim's late father's words and actions illustrating what the experts say. Life is complicated, but we should not avoid thinking and making every effort to understand, especially when moral life or death issues are to be considered. And that brings me to this. My career as an academic has been about taking complicated stuff and presenting it in the least confusing way possible to people who need to learn something. So, as I try to do at the end of every class, I ask, anybody got questions? Anybody confused? If so, raise your hand or click thumbs down. On the other hand, if what I have presented here is not confusing 
please click thumbs up, and if so inclined, please leave a comment. Thank you for watching.